Palantir and the mobility data firm Wejo are deepening their relationship in the electric vehicle space. Today, Wejo unveiled the availability of the electric vehicle infrastructure operating system through the Palantir Foundry. And here to discuss this latest iteration of the partnership between these two companies is Richard Barlow, CEO of Wejo, and Sean Sankar, Chief Operating Officer of Palantir. Yahoo Finance's own Prosu Romanian is also stopping by for this discussion. Uh, thank you all for being here. Richard, I'll start with you on this. Tell us who you're targeting to have used this EV infrastructure operating system and what kinds of problems this could actually solve? So we're targeting network operators, we're targeting retailers, utilities providers, and energy companies, and all a whole host of other organizations, including government, who need to understand where to install EV infrastructure. Um, in 2019, 29% of all, of all CO2 emissions came from vehicles, and EVs are now, are now being introduced not as fast as they should be to reduce those emissions. We've now built with Palantir an operating system where a whole suite of, of, of agencies, of network operators and utility providers can now establish exactly where to install infrastructure. Apologies, I'm muted. My bad. Uh, Sean, this is Pross here. What exactly is the data problem that exists with EV charging and infrastructure, and how does Palantir's Foundry product help with that? Well, thank you for having me. So that's a great question. You're dealing with enormous multi-trillion scale data sets that depict where the demand for EV charging is not only today, but where is it going to be in the future based on the empirical real world usage of vehicles out there. Plus you have the incredible infrastructure overlay. Like where can I even put infrastructure based on the grid, based on the dynamics? What will the cost of it be? You know, how do you really pioneer the intersection of those things? One of which is corporate proprietary data with uh, Wejo's unique data asset, asset on the vehicles to drive this sort of decision making. Uh, so Richard, I'm curious how this product and this combination, this OS, if you will, can actually alleviate this deep problem that we have in this country with the lack of charge plugs across you know, a number of localities and states. Well, one of the things we, we, want, we want to break is this myth around, around range, range anxiety. There's this view that EVs at the moment don't have enough, uh, enough kilowatts. That's not true. We understand we've collected over 13.2 trillion data points. We've collected over 500 billion miles of, of, of data from vehicles driving around, including over, over 300,000 EVs. We know how vehicles are being driven day in, day out. And the typical journeys are sub 50 miles per day per, per, per vehicle. So it doesn't need to be a fundamental change of, of fuel companies with, with hundreds of charging points in, on, on site. What there needs to be is a more intelligent approach. So, for example, with ROS, we can now work with energy companies, we can work with consumers of vehicles so that if they plug the vehicle in overnight, not all vehicles at the same time in the same area are charging at the same time. That would put a huge pressure on, 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 the, on, the, on the infrastructure, on the grid. Whereas, actually, by having a live OS, we can say 10, 10 p.m. to 11 p.m., this group of vehicles are charging, 11 p.m. to, to 1 a.m., this group of vehicles. And then there's enough charge in all the vehicles for them then to do the day's journey required, the, the following day's journey is required, rather than completely, rather than unnecessarily filling up a vehicle's uh, com complete battery life. Chaim, from a partnership like this for Palantir, what kind of revenue opportunity could that even create in the future? Well, what we love about working with Richard and the team at Wejo is just their ambition, the speed at which they've been able to move by building applications on top of Foundry. They announced Neural Edge, which is cutting edge AI technology that leverages what we've built together uh, to run on every, every potential car out there uh, last month. Just this month, you, you now see this entirely new product being birthed. We think that the revenue opportunity here is, is quite large. What AWS was to developers last decade, Foundry really will be to developers this decade. Hey, Sean, quick follow up here. Do you think that this product is actually more for governments than it is for, for uh, private enterprise like OEMs and charge companies because of the fact that there's such a huge um, you know, opportunity to use public land? You know, here in, Brook here in New York, they're gonna, they're gonna open a huge space in Brooklyn just for public charging for a lot of people to use their EVs there. So what do you think about that? Is that what the opportunity is? 
I think it's going to be multi-stakeholder and really at the intersection. Richard talked about utilities. That's a, that's an obvious and, and big one, and it's really kind of their primary charge. But large corporations, energy companies who are transitioning from oil and gas to renewables have a big play to make here. A lot of their gasoline infrastructure, gas station infrastructure uh, needs a new purpose. And uh, at the intersection of that will be public lands, public funding, uh, the equitable priorities that governments have in, in order to make sure this infrastructure is available to all. Richard, in terms of data privacy, do electric vehicle and EV infrastructure customers actually have to opt in to provide this data? Or is this something that Weijo and Palantir have automatic access to now through this operating system? No, not, not at all. The 11.9 million vehicles we have live on platform, we have individual consents. We actually have visibility of the 50 million vehicles and the 11.9 million vehicles is where we have clear consent from the driver who said they'd like to share their, the battery data of their vehicle or their location to identify a, a parking space. We're very much around what we call data for good, a very clear, transparent approach with drivers, with owners of vehicles that they have given consent for their data to be shared in return for something such as having charging on demand for their vehicle or, or identifying this parking space. Hey, Richard, one last quick question. From what the data is showing you guys at Wejo, where are some of the best parts of a municipality or city to place these charge points? At home. <laughs> at home is, is the best place. Um, people are doing less than 50 mile, miles a day of journeys. Yes, yeah, sure, that they, they should be demanding cities, they, they should they, the, the fuel, 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 fueling stations should, should be investing in infrastructure. But actually, in terms of what the grid should be doing, the grid should be focusing on, on how they can educate home users, people when they're at home, about when they should be charging their EV up. So they don't just plug their EV in and leave it. There needs to be more of an on-demand approach, which, which Palantir and Weijo's OS can do by informing the grid about when an EV should be charged or not charged.